Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. So, you know, as Halloween is coming up, I really, really wanted to try and do a top Halloween plants video, but this video didn't really go as planned. So I wanted to do a video mainly on houseplants, but honestly, like when I looked through them all, there wasn't that many houseplants that were considered kind of Halloween-y beyond, you know, just black plants or just plants with Halloween names. So I've actually concentrated this video mainly on fungus and a couple of garden plants, as well as some houseplants kind of thrown in there because honestly there is a lot of crazy stuff out there and it is in the way of fungus but that does not mean it is not awesome. That said let's take a look at some of the weird and wonderful things I've found. It may be gross but it is Halloween so let's go. Right I'm going to start with fungi because there is a lot of weird fungi. Seriously, it blows my mind a little bit. Okay, so my first fungus on our list is none other than Hydelenium pecchii. That wasn't too hard to say. I'm quite pleased. This fungus is also known as the bleeding tooth fungus, and you can probably see why, to be honest. It looks a little bit grim. This fungus has like thick red, I don't want to say pus, but like fluid that kind of oozes up through the tooth and creates the appearance of blood. And that's kind of what you're seeing there. It's, oh. Apparently this fungus underneath has tooth-like spines right underneath that white cap part. The fungus starts out with a pale pink center and then when it matures, it actually matures and fades to a kind of black color. So I guess it really would look like a rotten tooth inside and out. This moss can be found across Europe and North America. I don't know if anybody has ever run into this, but it's, oh, I think if I saw that, I would actually think it was some sort of, not animal, but just something that's maybe in the process of decaying. I don't know. It's pretty grim. Oh no, my tablet's just re <laughs> What's happened to my tablet? No, no. What are you doing? Oh, I hate this tablet. If anybody has a Kindle Fire, throw it away in the bin. Where were we? Moving on. Oh gosh, there's another name I can't pronounce. This is the Xylaria polymorpha, also known as Dead Man's Fingers. Now, this one is definitely grim. This is possibly my favorite on this list, actually. So this fungus grows in tufts of three to six fingers that are often bent to give the impression of, of course, dead fingers or dead hands. This species is fairly common in Britain and Ireland. Wait a minute, it says here, generally not considered an edible fungus. Generally. Does that mean some people tried? I mean, who would, <laughs> who would look at that and go, yeah, all right. The language there really interests me. To get information about these plants, by the way, I have kind of taken little blurbs from different pieces of different websites just so I know kind of about them, so it's not just my opinion on them. So it's some of the language people use in these posts, it, I don't know, it's odd. Okay, this one is a little bit nuts, and hopefully none of you are too sensitive to things like this. Uh, if you think you're going to be sensitive to gruesome things, you might want to look away a little bit because this one is particularly, particularly grim. This is the Calathrus archery, also known as the octopus stinkhorn or devil's fingers. Now, let me tell you, this is freakier than the last one. I can't lie about that. So this fungus basically starts out in a kind of egg sac and it bursts out as if it was like some sort of weird alien thing. So it has an egg stage and an emerging stage, obviously. Before rupturing the egg, it's typically two to three centimeters in diameter. Oh, is it just me or did anybody else think that thing was way bigger looking at that image there? That looks way bigger. I thought that was like a foot tall. Maybe that's just me. Tell me what you think in the comments. I actually thought that was way bigger. Oh, I mean, I'm not mad that it's small. <laughs> so when it is coming out of its egg or sac or ball or whatever you want to call it, it has a large starfish-like body whose four to eight arched red arms are coated with smelly goo on the upper surface. That is nasty. The mature fruit body is typically 20 centimeters across with arms arching to 10 centimeters in height. So it is small. The bright red color makes this species easy to identify. Yeah, no shit. Oh, 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 it gets better. So it has a strong, unpleasant odor reminiscent of rotting meat. No distinctive taste at the young egg stage. Are we eating this as well? Really? Why? No, people are eating it at the egg stage. So they're not eating it at the nightmare stage. Why are we eating it at all? This fungus is mainly found in leaf litter under trees and shrubs from June to September in Southern Britain. Okay, moving on to the next plant. This is Actea pachypoda, 
also known as doll's eyes. The plant is native to eastern North America and in eastern Canada and the Midwestern and eastern United States, so it gets around this doll eye plant. So the fruit of this plant is the white berries that give the plant the nickname doll's eyes. Both the berries and the entire plant are considered poisonous to humans, so I guess we're not eating this one, even though it's the, the most edible, I think, out of all of them so far that you'd want to eat if you had to. This would be the one I would pick to eat, but then again I'd probably get killed because it says the berries contain cardiogenic toxins which have an immediate sedative effect on human cardiac muscle tissue and are the most poisonous part of the plant. So we definitely shouldn't eat it. Ingestion of the berries can lead to cardiac arrest and death. Nice. Real nice. Okay, moving on. This is the Monotropa uniflora, also known as white ghosts or Indian pipes. I think we'll stick with white ghosts, being that it's so close to Halloween. This one doesn't look too bad, actually. It says it is native to temperate regions in European Russia, Asia, North America, and Northern South America. Unlike most plants, it is white and does not contain chlorophyll. It is not dependent on sunlight to grow. It can grow in very dark environments, such as the understory of dense forests. The stems reach heights of 5 to 30 centimeters. See, honestly, to me, this fungus just doesn't look so bad. It kind of reminds me of like just loads of roses that have wilted and they've been like frozen. It doesn't really look super spooky or super grotesque to look at. That's that's acceptable. That's not so bad. I don't hate that one. That's definitely one of the nicest ones in this list. Moving on, we have the Ascocorni sarcoides, also known as the purple jelly disc. Fungus, I presume. To me, this looks quite a lot like human entrails, or maybe part of a brain. I don't know. It's found mainly on the trunks and branches of dead beech trees and is very common throughout Britain and Ireland. Why are we getting all the weird fungi? It is also found throughout Europe whenever there are broadleaf woodlands or parklands where fallen timber is allowed to rot away naturally, fruiting in the late summer, autumn, and early winter. Lovely. I'd rather not see fruits on this. I think, the, you know, the core concept of what this thing is, is, is enough for me. I think in real life it would be pretty grim. Not as grim as the other one. I think the worst one was, what is it called? The octopus stinkhorn or the devil's fingers one. That would definitely be the one I would rather not see in real life if I had the choice. Okay. The next plant on our list is none other than the Hydnora africana, also known as the piranha plant. This plant is native to southern Africa. The plant grows underground except for a fleshy flower that emerges above ground and emits an odour of faeces to attract its natural pollinators, dung beetles and carrion beetles. The flowers act as temporary traps, retaining the beetles that enter long enough for them to pick up pollen so they kind of just brush up on them, I guess. This produces a fruit that grows underground, taking up to two years to ripen fully. The fruit is similar in taste and texture to a potato. I am not kidding. That's what it says. The fruit is similar in taste and texture to a potato. Can I just ask why we're eating all this weird stuff? Seriously, who, who thought this was a good idea? Who, you've got to think for a second, at some point in history, somebody looked at these plants and thought, yeah, I'm gonna try and eat that. Not knowing what would happen. Moving on. This is Auricularia auricula. It's like they just copied and pasted the first part of the name to the second part. This is also known as the jelly ear fungus. It grows mainly on dead elder trees and on fallen branches, but occasionally you may also find it growing on other kinds of hardwood. Obviously, this is pretty cool because it looks like a seathered ear. I mean, the picture I'm looking at, even like the top, I don't know what you call that part of your ear. Anyone that has their ears pierced probably knows what that is called. I don't, but it's, it looks, on the picture I'm looking at, it looks like it, that's kind of got like little baby hairs that you get. Like it kind of looks real to me. Ooh. Fairly frequent in Britain and Ireland as well. I'm not making this up. <sighs> Next on the list, we have the Clathrus ruba, also known as the red cage. This plant can usually be found across northern Europe. When seen for the first time, it is often assumed to be something other than a fungus, like the common stinkhorn and the dog stinkhorn. The cage stinkhorn emerges from a white ball or egg and other members of this family, the egg is said to be edible. Do you know what I mean? I'm reading, a, I'm reading this from like a blurb of a website and it says here, I've never met anyone who can confirm that from first-hand experience. And there are other reports saying that eating red cage eggs can cause serious gastric upsets. Like, are you okay though? This is the second plant now where somebody has basically said, yeah, it's all right, you know, the eggs are fine, but I don't know what happens if you eat a full, you know, adult plant. No one has kind of been alive to tell us. This happened earlier on as well. 
Rare in mainland Britain, but fairly common in the Channel Islands and in Central and Southern Europe. The red colour, which is due to the presence of carotenes, the chemicals that give carrots their characteristic deep orange-red colour, seems to only reinforce the smell of the stinkiest of mushrooms, that of rotting meat. So another one that smells like death. It looks like nightmares, it smells like death. Great. The red colour might even, in being similar to the colour of meat, be a further attraction to flies. So basically, this plant gets off on looking like rotting meat, like it's dead. Oh. Can, you can obviously see the, you know, the whale of a time I had looking at these plants. And these are just some of them, by the way. I probably left out like a ton of different fungi and just cool stuff like that. But this is kind of what I had with the time and looking on the internet. So if you want to go and look at more of those, feel free and tell me in the comments what you find. I'm going to very quickly move on to, you know, other plants. So not house plants, but more kind of garden plants. Okay, first up we have the Trapper bicornis, also known as the Devil Bod plant. I can't say that. Devil Pod plant. This is an aquatic plant and can be found in places such as Eastern Asia, China, Vietnam, and Cambodia. The picture I'm probably showing you now probably looks like your reasonable average aquatic plant. I think I saw on the internet they called them uh, water chestnuts. It's kind of nice. I like the formation on that actually. It's pretty. But the thing that is truly metal, and I mean metal, about this plant are 100% the seeds. And that's where it gets the name Devil Pod Plant from. The plant is sometimes harvested from the wild for its local use of its edible seed. So we're cooking again, guys. We're back in the kitchen. The raw seed contains toxins, but these are destroyed in the cooking process. That has to be the last thing that we're prepared to eat now. It just has to be. Okay, next on the list for other plants, we have the Aristolochia. Aristolochia salvadorensis, also known as the Darth Vader plant. And to be honest, it's quite clear to see where this plant gets its name from. This plant originates from Brazil. Mm. Insects fly through the plant's eyes and get covered in pollen by its sticky hairs. So a similar thing to the, uh, I can't remember what the plant name was. Each bloom on the plant lasts one week. So I actually find this pretty cool, although I don't know if I'm just kind of weirded out by some of the juiciness of the previous plants, but at least some of the photos I'm seeing of this, it looks kind of juicy. You know what? The image I'm looking at now, right, of this Darth Vader plant, kind of, kind of, looks a little bit like bacon. It's got that really crispy, overdone baconness to it. Here it is. I just think I've looked at all these plants and people eating plants. I'm currently hungry now. I'm pretty sure it's lunchtime. I'm just getting hungry. Maybe this, maybe this is how people started eating this stuff. Okay, next. I actually tried to grow this at one point. This is the Taka Chantriri, also known as the Black Bat Flower. These words are getting really difficult to say. I think I'm just hungry. So, this is also known as the Bat Plant or the Bat Flower Plant because I guess it kind of is a bit like bat. This plant is native to Thailand, Malaysia, and Southern China. These all black flowers have whiskers that can grow up to 28 inches long. And I love the whiskers on these. I have actually seen these in real life. When I went to Edinburgh Botanic Gardens, they had a few of these in, in one of the greenhouses, and they were so awesome. There's also a white version of this plant that also, honestly, it looks amazing as well. But as it's Halloween, I just wanted to show you guys the black version because, you know, all about that Halloween life right now. I've even got my Halloween nails on, guys. I really, I went hard. That concludes our other plants category. So the house plant section of this was what the video was originally supposed to be. And honestly, I had great, 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 great difficulty in finding basically any house plants. The only type of plant that I found really like came through for me and delivered was actually alocasia. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of alocasia. Really, it's just honorable mentions in this list. So I will start with the first one. You may remember this from a rare plant index. I'm not really sure. This is the alocasia local. I think in the video I actually noted that it would be a pretty good uh, Halloween plant because the leaves on the plant actually look like witches hats or at least they do to me like a really like Tim Burton's version of a Halloween hat I really really like it this is a mutation from the alocasia poly I do believe generally speaking I can't really find it anywhere online to actually buy one because I considered buying one just to show you guys but I couldn't really find one at all and I looked for quite a while so yeah this plant isn't for everybody not gonna lie 
but I think it's pretty awesome and it's definitely, definitely Halloween-y looking. Okay, next on our mini alocasia list, you could call it, is the alocasia flying squid. Now, I actually find this plant a little bit freaky. I don't know why that is. There's just something about it that's a bit freaky to me. I think it's odd as well because it actually disobeys pretty much all of the rules of an alocasia, generally. Like, it's just, it looks nothing like an alocasia. I wouldn't even know what that was if I had to guess it. One thing is for sure though, it definitely looks squid-like, which I can only assume is why they named it this. If you know anything about this plant, do tell me because I'm quite intrigued. I would like to see one in real life, but I don't think I would pick one up to be honest. It's just a bit much for me. Next on the list is the Alocasia Copria. Now I think I've had either two or four of these. I've had quite a few and I've got rid of all of them because I, I guess I just didn't love it as much as, you know, I love other plants, but it's to me, I've always said this plant is a little bit like something out of the Alien movie. Like, I honestly think this could burst out of somebody's chest, to be quite honest. I think if you did place it in among, you know, Halloween decorations, it would really, really stand out. Like, you could just, you know, decorate around your plants in the way that I've kind of done with this Florida ghost, I suppose. I think it would look quite cool. And the last plant on my little mini list that I found was the Alocasia Nebula. Now, I think I also mentioned this in my Alocasia Rare Plant Index because I said that it was basically Batman's Alocasia. So it's like, it looks pretty meaty actually, but it's black and it's got a lot of dimension, a lot of shading to it. And it's got a really cool prominent shape. Again, I think you could put this plant in among Halloween decorations pretty easily and it would look pretty awesome to be honest. And unfortunately that brings me to the end of this really weird Halloween mashup of plants, fungi, everything really. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I originally, as I said, this video was intended to be something else entirely, but I guess there just aren't that many plants that fit the bill of kind of what I wanted to show you. So I did move on to other things instead, but it's kind of enlightening because it seems that there's a lot of weird stuff out there and everyone's eating the weird stuff that's out there and also come to Britain because we have plenty of it. On that note, if I have actually missed kind of Halloween-y looking houseplants so that you think, oh my gosh, you should have totally mentioned that, then please do write in the comments below and I will definitely take a read because I'll probably, to be honest, I'll probably kick myself for not finding them and mentioning them if it's something I actually knew about but I would love to hear what you guys have suggested for Halloween plants. And I actually think this is the last time I will see you guys before Halloween. So have a great Halloween, I guess, no matter what you've got planned. I hope you have a really, really good one. If you celebrate Halloween, that is. Do you really celebrate Halloween? Is that a thing? Do we celebrate Halloween? Never thought about it that way. Thank you very, very much for watching this video, guys. I will see you in the next one. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see any more of my content that is probably not Halloween-y at all, then feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much. I love you all. And I will see you next week, guys. Bye.